This is the third part of the lineage of Raigosa. Two other ones have been published previously on YouTube, and you can uh, watch those uh, if, if you should want to find more information previous to this one. I call this the Real Kings of Leon. Uh, there's a band by that name, but as you will see, um, I will explain what I mean by this on this presentation. This is a journey that goes back 1,500 years. I've got updates. For the past two to three years, I have researched our family lineage by using the resources available on Ancestry.com. DNA analysis reveals a profile almost evenly split between native of modern-day Mexico and European, mainly Spanish and a compilation of regions around the Mediterranean Sea, indicating the known territories of the Roman Empire. Exhaustive research finally shows a definite and document-backed direct lineage to Spanish ancestors going back to the late 15th century, in this case 1480. This discovery was made on the 20th of April, 2023, the day that marks 64 years since the birth of our mother, Sandra. She has since died um, a few years back, and uh, as if a revelation on her birthday, I was able to find the first segment of lineage, um, interestingly enough. Further historical research has discovered a lineage that now dates to 519 AD. I have created two tables with our family lineage using calligraphy techniques. The last stroke to these tables was entered by my hand at the exact midnight hour of May 22nd, 2023. All other family surnames, Ojeda, Hernandez, Ceballos, all of our belonging to our families from both the paternal and the maternal do not show much documentation before a certain time. And this can be explained by the fact that records were lost, destroyed over the centuries, either by war or what have you. Adoptions occurred, there was misreporting, children were born out of relationships that were not sanctioned by the Catholic Church at the time, and that was the only record keeper. So if there were children born in this state or in this condition, records cannot be found. Moving on. As I had detailed in the last, in the previous videos, um, we start off with our with my grandparents, uh, my grandmother right here on the bottom of the screen, and my grandfather who has passed on. My grandmother still lives; just celebrated her eighty fifth birthday, I believe, um, in Mexico. My grandfather Jose Raigosa, which is the line we're going to focus on, was a U.S. born citizen along with his grandfather or his father, I'm sorry, Macedonio Raigosa, uh, who would be my great-grandfather. Um, my mother was also born U.S. citizen, so these are three generations of U.S. citizens. So, um, we start off with the my grandparents in this modern times. I do not show any of our relatives um, currently out of protection of for their privacy. And uh, but I will start with the bottom screen here um, as I circle Guillermina, which is my grandmother, Guillermina, and Jose Raigosa, which is my grandfather, which is where we're going to start here. Um, I'm not sure if I can zoom in a little bit for you. I will. Okay, so Jose Raigosa was my grandfather born in the U.S. His father uh was Macedonio, also U.S. born, American. So that would make uh, one generation, two generations. My mother was a third generation. And then uh, our, myself and my siblings were the fourth American-born generation. Cesareo, an uh, ancestor of mine, was born in Mexico in 1860. And then his father was Crispin born in 1828, also in Mexico. Without going into the, all the generations in between the last one that I mentioned and these right here, um, 
because there's really no point. It's just one by one going back through them, but they're all document backed. I refer to Luis de Raigosa, born in 1645 in Mexico. And then his son, Francisco de Raigosa, born in 1658. Notice the misspelling or the difference in spelling, I should say. R-A-Y-G-O-S-A, R-A-Y-G-O-Z-A, R-A-I, I'm sorry, R-A-I-G-O-S-A. I prefer R-A-I-G-O-S-A, but the records throughout uh, that I have discovered have constantly show a misspelling with the, with the name. It's the same one, same people. It just gets misspelled. Maybe because the person who's documenting doesn't know the exact pronunciation or the people don't know how to spell their own name. Uh, most importantly, here we focus on Francisco de Raigosa, who was married to Brigida, or Brigida de Miramontes. I don't know if it's Brigida or Brigida de Miramontes. I'm going to go over to the um, Ancestry.com website and go to the same picture that I showed, Brigida or Brigida de Miramontes. If I click there, that's her name. Born in 1660. Her father was Lorenzo de Miramontes, born in 1638 in this state of Zacatecas in Mexico. Zacatecas is a state in Mexico which was previously Nueva Galicia, province of Spain, under the Spanish Empire and before the revolution. After the revolution, it became Zacatecas under the Republic of Mexico. His father was Juan El Minero de Zacatecas de Miramontes. His father was Hernando, or in some documents spelled as Fernando Miramontes. His father was Juan El Viejo, which is where I want to take pause. Juan el Viejo, meaning the older or the old man, de Miramontes y Rivera. He was born about 1540 in Sevilla, Andalusia, España, in Spain. He was married to a Magdalena Bobadilla, which I'm not going to go into too much grand detail today. Uh, she was also born in Spain. She may very well be connected to the same Bobadilla family of Francisco Bobadilla, who traveled with Christopher Columbus in, the, in his voyages to the New World as one of the conquistadores. Um, again, I have not gone into too much research, but it is very likely that there is that connection because of the nobility that they were already part of. So. They may be related. I'm not sure yet. Either way, Juan El Viejo Miramontes, which I just finished mentioning, his father was Francisco de Miramontes. Catarina Maria de Rivera was his mother born in 1520. This is where things start getting interesting. So I had, as I had already mentioned, recapping real quick, Raigosa, our family line, was married to Brigida de Miramontes, which is our grandmother uh, by, by blood, bloodline. And her family was Miramontes, married to a Miramontes to a Catarina Rivera. So Raigosa to Miramontes to Rivera. Her father was this person, uh, Perafan de Rivera Portocarrero, and he was a Duke of Naples under the Spanish rule when they had possession of Naples in Italy. And that is a documented ancestor of ours. Going back. If you take note of his maternal last name, Porto Carrero, his mother was Ines Porto Carrero. Again, we're kind of like stepping 
maternal to maternal to maternal, same bloodline um, as uh, our relatives in modern day. She was born in 1479 in Spain, daughter to a Pedro el Sordo, the deaf one, the deaf as in cannot hear, Porto Carrero in 1450 in Spain. And his mother was uh, Maria Porto Carrero, but it takes it, it takes a real nice, interesting turn with Juan Fernandez, his father. And again, these are no longer documents on ancestry, but this is all documented history online or any historical resource that you can find. Wikipedia, uh, Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica, anywhere that you find history, you will find that... Um, this lineage continues on and is historically recorded. So document-wise, I can prove up to this point, up to that point, to Inés Porto Carrero. Uh, and then from there on, it becomes historical information that you can find anywhere online or any other historical resource. And that's, that's where it gets mind-blowing. So right here, I'll go on to the next slide. This is the table that I made with our family uh, lineage. Um, and I start off with my father, my mother. I don't show current people because to protect their privacy. Um, Ojeda, the line of Ojeda goes all the way to 1725 with Jose Facundo de Ojeda. The Hernandez line goes all the way to 1838 to Manuel Hernandez. Uh, Raigosa goes to 1820 is as far as I can go with documents. And then Raigosa, of course, is the one that I have been finding a wealth of information. Uh, and I blow that up right here with Jose, people that I've already covered. Jose, my grandfather, great-grandfather Macedonio, Cesareo. And then I zigzag all the way to 1480 to the Porto Carrero, which I just mentioned previously. From Porto Carrero, I start the next, pay, the next table uh, family tree right up here. And you can barely see 1480 and then to 1450 with Pedro Porto Carrero to 1419 uh, Juan Fernandez to 1380 and so on from 4 1357 to 1328 to 1275 to 1235 to 1210 1190 i couldn't find a date for lorenzo up here fernandez de acuña 1103 1067 1030 1010 the year 1010 a.d which was pelayo pelaez and in the next slide i will show his father pelayo froilas the deacon famous person in history in Spain, Pelayo Froilas, the deacon of León, married to Aldonza Ordóñez. And as I had shown from maternal connections, again, Raigosa, Miramontes, Rivera, Puerto Carrero, now Bermúdez. In 990 AD, her father was Ordoño, in 981 AD, her mother was Cristina Bermúdez, daughter of King Bermudo of León, King of León, in 948. His father was King Ordoño. Um, and his wife, Rey Bermudo, was Reina, the Queen Velasquita Ramírez. So his father was uh, Ordoño III, married to Urraca Fernández. And his father was King Ramiro II of León. If we go back to the deacon here, his father was a count. His father's father was a count. His father's father's father was a count, married to a Pamplona, which is a well known nobility of Spain in that period of time, Pamplona, which was who this king was married to as well, another 
of the family line of Pamplona in 900 AD. So if that doesn't get any more, if it, it, once you think it couldn't get any more interesting, I go to the next slide and I continue this line right here. Okay, so to be continued on the next slide right here to King Ordoño II of Leon in 873, married to Elvira Menendez. Her, his mother was Jimena de Asturias. His father was Rey Alfonso III of Asturias, part of Spain. So he was a king of Leon, and then his father was a king of Asturias. And then his grandfather in 821 AD was King Ordoño I of Asturias. And then, um, uh, and then his father was Ramiro I of Asturias. And then Bermudo I of Asturias. His father was Froilas de Cantabria. I believe that's Canterbury. And his father was Pedro de Cantabria, Peter of Canterbury. Uh, and then from there, there's a debate, but it's pretty much agreed upon historically that his ancestor was Leo Wigildi, in, who was born in 519 AD, a king, a Visigoth king, the Goths. So for those people who like Goth, apparently we descend from the Visigothic king of, his, of Hispania or Spain. This guy, you can find it on Wikipedia. So, mind-blowing information. Uh, it's just mind-blowing. And, and it's interesting to discover all these things. And I recommend for anybody who's interested in looking into their lineage, do it. You just don't know what you're going to discover. And in this case, I discovered this. All document-backed, all historically-backed. The facts show it. And that's that. So, thanks for watching.